scripture reading is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the, the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. Good morning. This is for Sales Baptist Church, for Sales Indiana. I'm Pastor Mike Kentrell, and we welcome you to our service today. And happy Father's Day to all you fathers and men. Uh, this is a special day, and that we honor fathers. And we want to thank you for joining us this morning, and thank you, Krista, for opening us up uh, with our our song this morning. This is My Father's World, and Kaden Gilpin, uh, as she read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 6 through 7. And we thank our, our video team, uh, Alan and Corey Welch, for all of that they do in our church. So as we begin uh, this morning, if you're listening by Facebook and later on uh, YouTube, uh, we appreciate you uh, joining us and and being a part of our worship service uh, until we meet regularly back uh, here at the Versailles Baptist Church facility. So let us go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessing upon this day as we worship and remembering this is Father's Day and honoring our fathers. Father God, we thank you this beautiful day that you've given us as we come together in your name to worship you. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy that you extend to us each day. We thank you that you're always with us, always providing for us. You're all, always um, looking out for us and, and giving, giving us insight from your word as we study it. And this being Father's Day, I pray that our, our fathers uh, will take the word and read it and apply it to their lives that they may be men of God that they will make good decisions for not only for themselves individually but families and church and in their workplaces and wherever they go that they might uh, be an inspiration and a mentor to many others maybe that doesn't know you lord lead us in this service today and we look to you uh, as our father our heavenly father the giver of all things, creator of all things. We praise and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My scripture and message text this morning is Father's Day, Becoming a Godly Man. And I'm reading from 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And if you would like to write this down for further reading, uh, that goes along with this message today. Second Samuel chapter 7 verses 12 through 16 and Deuteronomy chapter 17 verses 18 through 20 uh, which talks about uh, uh, David. God uh, promised him and made a covenant with him that he would be with him and provide for him and help him become a godly man, a godly leader. So as we look at the introduction of this passage of scripture, second, uh, I'm sorry, First Kings chapter two, one through four. This is the final words of a father, King David, to a son, and this is extremely significant, especially when a a father is transferring a divine purpose and responsibility uh, on. Uh, to his son or to future leadership and King David had some advice for his son Solomon as he was uh, lay laying dead or, or in his final hours and his, uh, his time grew near and we'll see in verse 1 here in a few minutes he, he charged his son Solomon to be a spiritual, strong, obedient, and faithful man. So it sounds like it's very wise to me, advice that's needed now in our day and time 
right now. So become, to become a man uh, means you're willing to take responsibility for how uh, you live your life. Uh, and it is important for men to take that kind of responsibility, not only individually to themselves, but to their home and to their church. So it's irresponsible people run away, make excuses, or blame others, but those who uh, do never learn to become men or women of integrity and proven character, nor do they know the joy of the Lord or inherit the promises then he gives to the faithful ones. So David became a real man because he was a man of God after God's own heart. And yes, he did have flaws. He wasn't uh, blameless always, but he loved God and he had a heart for God. So he became a man of God and received the promises from God like few others ever have and never will. But David did uh, determine not to run away uh, from his responsibilities. Uh, he, had, he did have uh, difficulties and occasionally and like the whole generation or, or the world itself is plagued with sins. But to face them he learned what to take what it took to become a man as he trusted in God. So as David instructed Solomon to become a godly man, first of all, I want us to look at uh, verses 1 and 2. Um, what we see is a father fulfills his responsibility. So fathers have a responsibility. And verses 1 and 2 uh, tell us what David experienced and how he went about uh, doing his responsibilities. So David, who had been reigning as joint, what I would call regent or ruler or king, uh, with his son Solomon, is ready to step down as king of Israel. So in verse 1, it says, as David's time to die grew near, he charged Solomon, his son, saying, now I'm going to leave it right there, because that's, that's what verse 1 says, and we'll come to the, the, to the answer of that in verse 2 in a few minutes. But in, in the closing days of David's life, he wanted to leave his son words of wisdom uh, that would help direct his life as he matured into a man and directed the kingdom of which David had invested his life. So, here in the Bible, in God's Word, a person's dying words are especially significant. And it was for David, because he was passing on his legacy, his reign, onto his son. And he wanted to do it in obedience and faithfulness to the Lord. So the setting, therefore, calls the readers to, to give particular attention to these verses. Now, King David charged his son, Solomon, with a solemn authority of a dying father is nothing to that of the living God who gave the commandment to David and gave the reign to David. So there are great truths which are charged with our Heavenly Father here in verse, uh, verse 3. So what we want to do is keep these truths carefully in mind as those who must give an account according to His excellent statutes which are given to guide our life. That's what the Word of God is. And it does for us. And it gives us important guidelines as David was pointing out to Solomon. And it was very significant and important for Solomon to take heed to the same instructions that was given to David, his son, uh, father, before his, his death here. So, 
David finishes his life strong by placing his, his son Solomon the responsibility to become a man of God, beginning here in verse 2. And I read verse 1 a few minutes ago, and now verse 2, it says, I am going the way of all the earth. Let me say that again. David said, I am going the way of all the earth. Then he says, be strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. That's very important. That's good instructions for a father to pass along to his son. Be strong. So, let's look at this word, the words, go the way of all the earth. It's a pitch, picture of uh, description of death. And David was painting a picture here. He was giving Solomon a, a picture of what it was going to be like. And as he knew that he was drawing near to death, David was wanting to pass along uh, to Solomon uh, a picture of what it was going to be for him. So David was a man who accepted his responsibilities and he was going to pass his responsibilities on to Solomon. He already shared the responsibility, but Solomon would be the one taking the reign from David. And he knew he would soon die, so he made plans that he would, which included counseling his successor, his son, as his responsibilities. So, for David, death is on the way. Not only to the end of this life, but a passage to better life, eternal life. And that includes all of us, as it did for David. It is a way of all the earth, of all mankind to dwell on earth, are themselves made from the earth, and therefore their flesh must return to the earth. Even the sons and heirs of heaven must go the way of the earth. That's biblical. That's what the Bible says. They must die. But we walk with anticipation on, on this way through the valley of the shadows of death. As David spoke himself, in Psalms chapter 23, verse 4, in uh, <clears throat> the way of the valley of the shadow of death. Prophets and even kings must go this way to a pure and higher life, greater honor than this earth can even offer. So David is going this way. And as, as good and wise a father, he gives Solomon's direction so that he can too become a man of God. Secondly, we see a father challenges his son to become a man. In, in the latter part of verse 2 and verse 3. So a good and godly father, he wants his son to grow up and become the right kind of man. And in verse 2, part uh, part of verse 2, uh, David challenges his son to become a strong man. Not only to become a man, but he needs to be strong in his faith, strong in his belief, strong in his commitment. And David says, be strong therefore and show yourself a man. So Solomon needed to, to stand firm in support of right against wrong. In our day and time, we have right and wrong. In David's time, there was right and wrong. So David said, stand strong against wrong. And he would face those. We face, his, we face that today in our lives as well. We're facing it right now in our generation. And that's why Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 tells us, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So Solomon was encouraged to be strong in keeping the word of the Lord. And the word prove or show yourself literally means become a man. And he should show himself of 
to be a man or become a man by becoming obedient from the heart and to the Word of God. So fathers, all, all fathers are men. You too need to stand strong in strength and become a man. A man of the Lord. And this is why. As you know, we are at war. There is an enemy who is on the prowl. Uh, he wants you. He wants your family. He wants your children. He wants your church. He wants your business or your work. He wants your nation. And listen to what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, see we are at war with our enemy, and our enemy is the devil. And he says your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. And that's why it's so important as we, we read the scriptures and we take it serious and take it to heart. We got to be strong. We have to become strong men of faith. And be strong and show yourself a man day in, day out, throughout the year. And that's, and those that would keep charge of the Lord their God must put their life in God's capable hands and ask Him to make them strong in His power and in His might. Now let's look at verse 3 which teaches how Solomon was to grow in his strength and show that he was a man. Verse 3 says, Keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinance, and his testimonies. According to what it is written in the law of Moses, that you may succeed all that you do wherever you turn. This was important for Solomon to understand as David was passing this important instructions along. He says, in your statutes, your commandments, your ordinances, your testimonies, according to the written law of Moses, and that was given many, many years before, and it still, still stands to that day, and it stands for us in our generation today, God's Word is very valuable, important in the life of every person, not only men, but every person that walks upon this earth. So all of God's uh, requirements have been written down for us, for you, for me, for everyone. And the written Word is our rule, and we are responsible for God to govern ourselves by it. It's like any manual that, uh, that you read or any textbook you ever read. You read it because you want instructions. And the Bible is the best instruction for life that we will ever have. You can't read it one time and get it. You've got to reread it and read it again in order to understand and, and allow the Holy Spirit to interpret and teach you the, what's right for you. So David... Uh, charged him to study the word and to follow the word so that he, the kingdom, would do well. And the same goes for us as individuals and as a nation. We would be much better off if all leaders you know, of our nation would, would pattern their lives and lead a nation according to to the teachings of the Word of God. See, we are to govern ourselves by God's divine will. And then lastly, or thirdly, we see a father's relays responsibility which leads to rewards if we follow according to God's Word. So, so here, David conveys here in verses 3 and 4 two incredible, and I say positive, uh, vital 
benefits that will result from the son's obedience to God. Talking about Solomon here. So in verse 4, it says, So that the Lord may carry out his promise, which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons are careful of their way to walk before me in truth, with all of their hearts, with all of their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Very important instructions. Very important for Solomon to take heed to what David was saying here, here in verse 4. So the first blessing, or I would call the first benefit, is a personal and, and kingdom, which is would relate to church or national prosperity. And we need that in our nation today. Strong leaders, strong men of God, strong of faith. And Solomon's personal obedience would be a result in personal success. So the advice that David gave his son is what leads to success in life and a successful career in God's eyes. So it's the way to prosper in all that we do, to succeed in integrity and satisfaction in every undertaking or which you turn your attention to. And may we turn our attention to the Word of God. May our heart be bent towards the Word of God for godly instructions. Become a strong man of faith, a strong man of God. So God prospers both our soul and our hand as we obey his word. Second, in verse 4, the second benefit is obedience. And it will ensure God's ongoing fulfillment of the promise of God made to David's lineage and his descendants. And that follows along to us today as we follow and, and read and study the Word of God. So all of the promises made in 2 Samuel chapter 7, 1 through 17 would be fulfilled, including the eternal nature of David's kingdom, forever occupied the throne of Israel. That's what David was telling Solomon. If he was faithful and became a strong man of faith, then he would occupy, that lineage would occupy the throne of Israel forever. So, here's the challenge today, men. Let us, let us, in our own age, keep God's charge, and then God will be sure to continue his blessing and his benefits in our lives as well. And the promise will never fail unless we let the precepts and the conditions fall. And the condition is that we walk before God by keeping His Word and the zeal and the resolutions. So if we do, we will have the promise of success in all that we attempt. And we will have Christ's direction as He leads our life, as He leads our family as he leads our church, as he leads our nation, and as he leads us individually as men in service to him. So in conclusion, conclusion here, uh, to prove yourself a man of God, God's eyes means following God's ways. And those that would keep the charge of the Lord, their God, to become a real man must put their life in God's capable hands and ask, ask God to make you strong by obeying God's word and, and he will put you in that position at uh, some point in time in your life to make good decisions and lead your home, lead in your church or maybe e even in our, our great nation. So. You can be a strong man of God only by ordering your life by God's commands. So here's a couple questions for, for us men today, or anyone that wants to be a strong and faithful 
in their faith in the Lord. Are you doing that? Are you willing to do that? According to what David is passing along to Solomon, strong, if, uh, important, essential instructions following the concepts and precepts of the Word of God, we will become the men that God intended us to be, a people of God as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you have given us some good instructions from your word that we listen and heed to what you tell us from your word. You, written, you wrote it in such a way that the Holy Spirit helps us interpret exactly how it is to be applied in our own lives individually. And as men, this being Father's Day, Lord, I pray that we, we men, would take serious our responsibilities, our accountabilities to our, to our self, to our families, to our church, to our nation. And whatever the calling is that you place it within our lives, that, Lord, we, we hold true to it. That we hold true to your word. And, Lord, you, you placed... Uh, Jesus Christ in our hearts as we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. So may we take serious our responsibility as fathers as well. Lord, bless this day. Bless the fathers of this day. And may they be true and strong men of faith, men of God, trusting in you, not wavering any way, but standing strong in their faith. Uh, as David said, this is uh, a time in my life that I need to pass on the rain to the next generation. And when that time comes, Lord, we'll know it and you will. And that will be successful in the lives of those who follow us as well. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. And Chris is going to close out our service this morning with faith of our fathers. Thank you again. God bless.